I'll start off. Do you have your uh, starting rotation set for this weekend? <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll go with uh, Hagen Smith Friday. Uh, we'll go with Tigert Saturday, Molina Sunday, and Colin Fisher on Monday. And how many years? Maybe never. I've been able to tell you a rotation. So hopefully, we'll stay healthy all year, and we'll be able to figure this one out. I knew those top three guys would be there. Yep. We, maybe a little bit of question on the order between Tiger and Molina. Was there any strategy with that order there? Uh, not really. Uh, just figured, I don't know, you probably talked to Coach Hobbs about it, but I think, you know, left, right, left, it doesn't, I guess it, it really doesn't matter. And it can change. Just maybe the, the, the two guys that have been in our program the longest. Uh, I mean, you could go through a lot of things. It's maybe how they pitched. It's, uh, but I think, there's, they're pretty equal. There's, they're both really good. So uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll go that way. But nah, no, no particular reason. And also, what went the decision to go with Fisher there in the, the fourth game? We were thinking about, you know, Bobby. We've got some other guys as well. Bobby, you know, tweaked his hamstring a little bit, and pitch count was down. And his, you know, his, you know, he tried to pitch last weekend. And we, he, we were inside it. He didn't have his best stuff and, and have the command that he's had and. Uh, but that's kind of what we're looking at. I mean, if you really look at it, Gabe Gackle's pitched really well lately. He threw great last weekend. And, um, you know, he would be a candidate. And there's a couple others. So it's a good problem to have. Um, some of these guys are young. But uh, their stuff is really good. So we'll, we'll just – we'll play it out. It's so like I told the team yesterday before practice started. We had a little meeting in the dugout. I just talked about it's just, it's just the beginning of the season. And, you know, the game will tell us what to do. You guys will show us what to do. And, uh, you know, the cream will rise to the top. We'll figure it out. Coach, just how tough was it to, to hear Peyton Stovall broke his foot this, this close yeah. to the season? Well, it was tough. It was tough for, for Peyton. It was tough for me personally for Peyton. And I think our team feels really bad for him. I mean, he, he, was, he was upset about it when he found out he just, you know, why me? Why does this keep happening? And missed games last year. He was really swinging the bat well to play good too. So uh, I just told him, you know, you're you're the strongest, you know, one of the stronger guys mentally. You can handle this, and that's why it was put on you. I feel like, and I think that, uh, you know, he'll be he'll be even more ready to go once he gets it going, uh, gets his live at bats. Uh, but yeah, it was tough. And when it happened, when, I, when the where the ball hit him, we we're like, ooh. That is not a good spot. Even though it was a changeup, it hit him flush, and he didn't move. You know, he's leading off the game, and you know he's mad at himself for not jumping out of the way. And uh, I said, well, you just you know you play the game the right way, and the guy throws you a changeup, you just kind of let it hit you, and it's, you take your base, and and it's you didn't do anything wrong. It's kind of the way you're trained, and uh, but we're 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 sure excited to get him back when he comes back. And then just. Not having him at second, how do you feel about, I guess, Holt, Sprague, Lott, anybody else maybe? Yeah, th those are, you know, Holt will play there. And uh, played there the last third of the season, did a great job. Um, you know, he was going to be our starting third baseman. Uh, so Sprague, Lott, who was going to probably play a little bit everywhere, will we'll start. And he started in college for a few years. So uh, I feel good about those guys defensively. Hey, what can you tell us about James Madison? Do you, do you do much of an advanced scout on one? Yeah, and it's still going on right now. I mean, uh, basically what I can tell you is that, you know, we, what we can do is we, we, we know what they did last year with who's coming back. And, you know, maybe we've, we've got velocities and tendencies and, and those type of things. But, I mean, this is a team that last year hit right at almost 300, you know, won a lot of games. Uh, They've, they're competitive. And I don't feel like they would have scheduled to come here a couple of years ago if they didn't feel good about what they had in the program at the time and then also what's coming in to start the season on the road, you know, a long way from home like this. And there's an outfielder, Trimble, I think, got some, Finley Trimble got some yeah. really big numbers. Really good stats, you know, just a tough out. You look at his numbers, his strikeouts to walks and batting average, I mean, he's, He's the guy they're probably built their lineup around, and he had a tremendous year last year. So, you know, really, you you try to watch batting practice the first day and see if some of the reports are 
your visual, your eyes, you put on them, they, it looks like what you've read. Uh, a lot of times you make some changes too. And then, and then you know, what does our pitchers throw compared to maybe what they're seeing with these numbers? So you might switch, you know, you, you turn the field a little bit on the, with those position players because of velocity or different things. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's the beginning of the year. You don't know much about a lot of people. So, you, you know, really, I just told our guys, We'll get as much as we can on them, but we just need to really take care of what we can take care of, and that's for us to play good defense and throw strikes. Hey, with your batting order with Stovall, um, what's the chain reaction to moving someone else and lead off and go from pretty, there? Pretty much just kind of basically what you said, we're just going to move everybody up. We'll probably hit our catcher lead off. It might be the first time I've ever done that. I know that uh, Biggio was a pretty good lead off hitter in, uh, in college back in the day, and uh, – so uh, White's a tough out if he's catching. Um, if he's not catching, then we'll flip it around. But if, if White's not catching, he'll be DHing if we, you know, if, on Friday or Saturday. So uh, you know that that's what we're looking like. And you'll probably I'll go left after that, then right, then left, and and then pretty much right after that. You know, if Stovall was is was in the lineup, you know, he might be heat, hitting lead off for us and. Then you go left, right, left, right, left, right, probably, and then you finish up with a few right-handers at the end. So, um, you know, if we get into the game, we feel like the righties are struggling with, with the right-hander, then I'll, I'll bring a couple of these lefties off the bench and let them hit. So you mentioned the catchers and, and Hudson's a starter. Do you have any, you know, plans already in place to, you know, with the depth that you have to give them a day off this weekend, or is it going to be a – Yeah, I won't season? catch him all weekend, no doubt. Um, I'm – you know, I think Helfrick's going to definitely catch, and you might see another one. Uh, just see how it goes. But um, we we feel really good about our catchers, and I'm sure it's going to be an ongoing question throughout the year, and unless some, unless guys just really do well and separate themselves, uh, you know, how am I going to handle it? Um, I don't know. I'm going to let it handle itself right now. And the fun of the seasons here, any one two players that maybe did the most for themselves in terms of either earning a starting job or, you know, figuring into the competition as we get to opening day? I think, you know, for the last two weekends, I've kind of put together the starting lineup a couple of times. And the lineup's done pretty well. has outscored the other team pretty good, uh, which is a good thing. Um, doesn't mean everybody in the lineup's done great. But, uh, you know, as a team, they, they play pretty well together. Uh, again, I, I told the team yesterday, the lineup will change throughout the year, and uh, just because you know you make the starting lineup day one doesn't mean you're going to be there in the fifteenth game. Um, so you know you got to keep working. So I don't, I don't really, I, don't, I can't say that one individual's really jumped himself up. Uh, I think it, it's kind of, it's been there's been some separation already going into into spring. Six or seven years ago, you might have had a lot of sophomores and juniors in your opening day lineup. This year, it's going to be a lot of third, fourth, fifth year type guys. How does that change maybe uh, – does it change your expectations at all that you have older players on the first day? Uh, I don't think it changes my expectation. I just uh, feel like that this is basically the way it is, and I've said it for two years now, that teams are always going to be old now, especially in our league. Um, you know, you, you know who you feel like as a coach, a coaching staff, who's in your program, who's going to be back for the next season, and who's going to be an impact guy, start, whatever. And then, you know, you've got some young guys coming in, but, you know, with the way everything works these days, you've got to fill in with some guys. And usually the guys you're going to fill in with are going to be a minimum of a sophomore. You know, you look at – Aloy, who's done a great job of swinging the bat, playing defense, a great teammate. Players love him. Well, he's only a sophomore. Uh, but he had a really good freshman year, and you think he would get better, and he has. He's, he's really coachable, and he's done a great job for us. And, uh, you know, I don't – freshmen getting in lineups in the SEC, there's going to be one here, one there. I think where you can really do it is on the mound because when you're on the mound, you got the ball. And if you get them out, you're pitching. And if you can control the running game and you can field your position a little bit and you don't panic, you throw it over the plate and you got good stuff, you're going to pitch. And it's, it's, I think it's maybe easier to prove it than maybe a position player that's got to do a bunch of things as far as playing defense, hitting, knowing the signs, base running. And, and a lot of times it takes a little longer for that guy. But we've always had 
for the most part, we've had one freshman that uh, plays a lot or two that play a lot as, you know, as a young guy, and they're, they're, they're our dudes as, as sophomores and juniors. Maybe expectations not the right word, and I think you're kind of alluding to this, but there's more consistency with older guys early in the season. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I, I think that that would be true. You know, um, you think about our outfield last year, you know, really three guys that transferred in, two, and then one that had been here the year before that transferred in. And uh, you, when you just take care of needs like that and then they come in and they do what you think they're going to do, and I think the expectation is that you're older, you're experienced, and we should be pretty good right out of, out of the blocks. And I guarantee you every team in our league thinks the same thing because every, every team in our league right now is says they're going to a regional and they have a chance to play in Omaha. And, and maybe talent-wise, that's, that's true. But, you know, you got to play the, you got to play the games. And then with, with an older uh, clubhouse where you've got a lot of 23, 24-year-old types, do you see the freshmen come in and, and mature quicker because they're put into more of a, an older setting? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if we have any 24-year-olds in there, maybe one. But uh, uh, I think the freshmen probably realize they don't have as big a group of young guys to go running around and doing – silly things so that might help them grow up a little bit because these older guys they're at the end of their college careers they want to win they want to do well now they work harder they're like you said they're more mature and i think they're going to follow the younger guys usually follow that lead and if you get one that's really serious when they come out of high school and we've got a couple of those in there right now it's interesting and those are the guys that uh that may be the closest ones to <coughs> playing and pitching right away Going back to, to Peyton Holt and moving him to second, was there any thought to maybe keep him at third and put Sprague Lott at second, or was it a pretty easy choice for you because of the defense yeah, and that kind it's, of thing? Uh, it was an easy choice for me because I we had already talked about it. You know, you got to plan because things happen in the middle of a game that if Stovall was to get hurt, how would we handle it? If Aloy was to get hurt, how would we flip it around? Things like that. And uh, – you know, Holt is a is a has better range than than Jared does. Uh, no knock on him. Jared can field with anybody in the country. His glove is outstanding. Um, but the experience that Holt gained last year playing here, and uh, you know, Sprague Glott has been more of a third baseman in, in college and a little bit of a shortstop. Played some second as well as a freshman. But we just feel like that you know that double play combination up the middle. Um, <coughs> might be a little more athletic with, with Holt at second. And Robinette uh, seemed to be really swinging the bat well lately. Is, is How is he looking defensively, and yeah. is he a guy that can maybe get some action this first weekend? Yeah, you know, if you, if you look at him physically and probably from the stands, I think you can see it. he's in the best shape of his life. You know, he pretty much stayed here in the summer and worked out and really worked on his body, got stronger. And, and uh, you know, he's a little heavier footed, obviously, than, than – than Wagner is, but his hands are good. His arm's very accurate, and it is strong. Um, so that's been a good battle over there. I see both of those guys for a while just kind of rotating out, probably DH playing first. You probably see that the first couple of days. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to let the games tell us, see what we see in the games. And, you know, we're talking range and picking balls out of the dirt. And, you know, the, the advantage that McLaughlin has, he's a bigger target. Um, Wagner has probably better range. They both pick the ball out of the dirt. So uh, I'm not going to say one's ahead of the other. They both have their pluses and, and negatives, I guess. But they both bring bring something to our lineup, and that's a little bit of sock and their tough outs. And, and um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's again, it's, it's not a problem whatsoever. Uh, it's just a matter of figuring out who to play in the field. Looking at James Madison's stats from last year, they stole a lot of bases, uh, had a lot of bunts. Uh, are you – is that something you've maybe focused on a little bit extra leading up to the season? And is that maybe a good test for your infield and, and your new catchers? Yeah, you know, I think they well, they still about 90 bases last year or something. But they also got thrown out 30 sometimes. So what that tells me is they're going to keep doing it. You know, that's part of their game. Some of those are probably on swing and miss, hit and runs. Um, so they're trying to, they're not just sitting trying to single, single homer. They're going to hit and run, try to advance runner, probably give up an out to move somebody to score in a position. Uh, yeah, we work we work on it a lot. We talk about especially early in the season when we're playing teams from normally you know east or the north. Um, they're inside a lot. They'll try to run a first and third offense on you and try to steal a run from you. And if we're up five runs in the fifth, we'll give it to them. Let's get an out. Let's get in there and hit. Um, 
you know, if it's late in the game, you gotta you gotta defend it a little better. Bunch, you gotta be on your toes. So uh, we know that that is a major possibility. And the SEC, they don't run as much because pitchers are quick to the plate and the catchers can really throw. You gotta really pick and choose your time, and you gotta really work at it. You know, Kentucky and Vandy do it a lot. They have those type of players. They play on turf. Um, so you know, you know what you know with the league. But the, the non-conference guys, you just know that. Uh, uh, they're going to probably doing something to score, you know, besides hitting the ball all over the field. They're going to try to manufacture runs. What's the uh, wireless communication that your, your players are using now? Was that much of an adjustment the last few weeks? Yeah, I was just feeling comfortable with it's probably the biggest adjustment, and that, in, that includes me because I'm calling signs or calling plays with – with someone standing next to me that's plugging it in, and you know what? If that's someone who's plugging it in and gets sick that day, I got to make sure that I know what I'm doing, or somebody else, so we can get it in, because we really don't have physical signs. Because it's this, it's a better system and it's quicker. Uh, the opportunity to run pickoff plays, and because with the with the what I call the shot clock, the 20 second clock, you know, it's hard for you, it's hard to put stuff on. Because the catcher had, you know, we used to have to get out and put signs on at everybody, and you know, it just now you got to go. Like you got to be, you, you know. And I'm always thinking a pitch or two ahead, even when we're on offense. But on defense, you know, if you see something, you plug it in. Hey, let's pick, let's pick this guy off first. Runner first and second. Nobody out. One out. We're going to slide that guy in there and pick. You probably see more picks than normal, just because it's easier to get them in. We want to do it during the game. But a lot of times we just we can't get it, his attention or whatever the case may be. Now they're, they're trained to look at that. And it says, catcher picked a first. The catcher gets a sign. He's given, you know, the pitch. If we, don't, if we want to call in a pitch, we can still radio it into his ear. And our pitchers, like the big leagues, they have it in their hat. And it's talking to them. Slider away. I mean, if you were standing next to him, you'd hear it. And every now and then it probably doesn't work like it does in the big league. And I guess we get to, you know, we, we get to hopefully not have to use one of our uh, offensive, defensive timeouts on that. You know, it's uh, – I'm sure there's going to be some times where we're just shaking our head like what are we doing with all this. But it, it does speed up the game. And uh, if, you, if technology works correctly, <laughs> I think it's a good thing. Season, do you have a feel for Dylan Carter and Adam Hatchman and, and yeah. what they might be able to do for you, if anything? Yeah, Dylan threw a bullpen the other day and he was really good. And uh, I mean, it's amazing. He's way ahead of schedule because um, when he heard it last year, I didn't think he pitched this year. You know, just going off of history uh, and what's going on with guys that have had this injury. But he's he's way ahead of the the game, so to speak, as far as recovery and. Um, he wants to pitch this year. You know, he's got two years of eligibility left. If he only had one, you know, then I would probably have a little more serious conversation with him like, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to redshirt you. Come back next year and be right in the middle of it again. This year is like you could still be right in the middle of it, but if it doesn't work out, you still have another year. Um, you know, if we get into it, when it's about time for him to, to possibly pitch for us, we will talk with him. And it'll be the conversation will will be, you know, do you do you want to do you want to use a year for the, to try? And if it doesn't go good, you know, it, it is what it is. And Hatchman, you know, he's he's a big old guy with a big arm. Um, he's starting to get there, and if he's ready to go in a few weeks, we'll we'll ramp him up and 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 we'll we'll see what happens. See if we can go there. Yeah. Yeah, sad deal. I've known Dean since I was a player here, 1981, 82. I mean, Dean, I just have a lot of memories of him because we all were in the same area, um, you know, up there in the Broyles Center, football, baseball, everybody. You know, it was football's area, but we were all in there. We didn't feel comfortable in there all the time. Didn't want to be in there getting any treatment. But Dean, he uh, he took control of that that uh, – that room. I mean, he, you could hear him snapping around and popping off and getting right back with those young guys and getting after guys he didn't feel that should be in there. And just, you know, his career spent so many years here at the University of Arkansas and, you know, was finished up in the foundation. And he's always been a big fan of, of baseball here. And 
uh, he'd come by and we'd talk a little bit. Every time I'd go by there, we'd talk. And he'd always want me just to come and sit in his office. And uh, we'd talk about the old days for a little bit. But uh, just, you know, it's, it's, it's super sad, super sad to see someone that, you know, that we all loved. And, and he loved this, this university and this athletic department, you know, uh, pass on. Thanks for time. All right. See you guys.